Hello everybody, my name is Professor Shibuno Isaac Barry, and today we're going to be looking at a uh, pendulum and, uh, you know, simple harmonic motion. Now we okay. learned... Now we learned last time that a, a spring and a simple harmonic motion, a spring simple undergoes harmonic motion. Okay, so so this obviously raises the question. Since our pendulums are common in our everyday world, just look at uh, one. I have an example right here, the mic wire. This obviously raises the question. Do pendulums that oscillate the same way, do they uh, obey simple harmonic motion? Now, for starters, we're going to use an idyllic, we're going to be using an idyllic string. Obviously, pendulums don't last in the real world uh, infinitely because of the same reason springs don't, air drag. But we're going to eliminate both air drag and air resistance and assume that these are ideal strings that don't get affected by them. And God damn, the highlighting is getting way too used. Okay. So remember that these are idyllic. I repeat, idyllic. So now, so now that we know that, oh God. So now that we know that, we are going to ask the question. Does a pendulum fall under a category of, of a perpetual machine that follows SHM? So I'm just gonna change the color right over here. Make a sound? I never knew that. So, does a pendulum obey SHM? We're going to find out. So, let me put the answer in green. So, we're going to be anticipating this. And at the end of the lecture, we're going to come back to this screen and see uh, what we predicted was really true. So, as you may have noticed, we're using a smart board for this lecture, and it's pretty cool. So, uh, this was a $3,000 uh, Samsung smart board. So, yeah, uh, it's really exciting to uh, use this. Anyways, I'm going to change my color back to white for now, and we're going to begin our hunt. So, it seems like a pendulum would be two-dimensional motion since a pendulum both has some things, okay, both has some things in the x and y direction. It both changes in the x and y direction. So, yeah. Now, it seems like it's too weighed, but the reality is it's actually very one-dimensional. Sorry, I accidentally erased part of that wall there. So, um, how is it, you know, one-dimensional, you may ask? Well, think about angles. Let's say we draw a line here. So, if we draw a line here, and now let's change our color to maybe blue. Wait, you can change it to black on the black background. That's hilarious. So let's draw a line. <coughs> so uh, now we have something like theta over here. So theta is over there and now we have this mass M, there's this length L of the cord, and that's really all we're given. Now, let's first of all find 
some of uh, Newton's law in uh, terms of angular stuff. So, uh, the angular equ equ you know, the angular equivalent of uh, Newton's law is equal to sigma torque. All of torque must sum up uh, to I A. Oh no, I alpha. Why you may ask? Okay, so I'm just gonna scroll down. Why you may ask? Well, mm, it's because uh, this, uh, so <coughs> remember, this is angular acceleration. So uh, that's the acceleration uh, exerted. And then I is basically just the moment of inertia, or just how much something is affected by a little, you know, tip and push. So, uh, this is moment of inertia. So, oh, uh, we're in the middle of a live stream, sorry. Uh, good night, student. Uh, hey, you won't come here. Oh, God. Come here. Mm, we're in the middle of a live stream right now. Yeah, that's fine, Mom. That's fine. I'm your mom. What are you Oh, doing? God. Wow. <laughs> live stream embarrassment, everybody. Wow. Live. Yeah. This uh, working, but if we put it on the table, the, if it gets to the ceiling, it doesn't work. So why don't you put it then like that? Then, oh, well, we can talk about it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. okay. Live embarrassment, everybody. I want to see what, what all happened and just move on. So, we know that this is equal to, I believe this is moment of inertia and then this is angular acceleration so this is uh, what we have now what the hell is this I'm just gonna wipe everything over here, sorry. Okay, so now, uh, if you look so deeply within angular acceleration, you know that it's equal to, uh, let's for do the equations in white instead of gray. Okay, you know, white, okay. So, now, Angular acceleration, we know that angular acceleration is going to be equal to change in omega. Oh my god, this is. I should probably keep my distance. Uh, so as I finish the lesson. My raw sleeve is writing for me. Uh, how long the lesson left? Eh, it's about like 75% more. What? Finish it quickly. We're well, like 25% in. So, angular acceleration and the change in omega, you may know, as angular velocity and then over delta t. So now, uh, if you use the differential calculus, you also may substitute this as d omega over dt. Now, omega is actually d theta over dt. Which gives us acceleration equals to d squared theta over dt squared. Okay, so now that we know that, What the hell, why would these keep popping up here? Do you have any clue? Sorry. So, that means the torque is equal to I D squared theta over DT squared. 
So that means that, okay. So now, let's look at the perpendicular distance. What is the perpendicular distance, you may ask? Well, gravity is being exerted this way, right down. And for, oh God, uh, is there an undo button here? Eh, okay. Sorry, everybody. So now, this is where MZ is being exerted, and it's being exerted from the center mass right over here. I even probably should have drawn that in red. Uh, no need to be too impatient. Okay, so that is our center of mass, and then uh, that's where it's being exerted from. What the hell? Finally, okay, so now we're going to try to find this distance from the blue line to the center of mass. From the, this point where the red line intersects the blue line to this point where it hit the center of mass. Now, we can do this using a tiny bit of tricks. So uh, excuse me one second. Well, I do some tricks. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so that's um. Okay, so. So Katoa, this is opposite hypotenuse. Okay, so X. Mm-hmm. So, x sine theta, okay. Okay, uh, you can see it. Yeah, x sine theta equals to L. So that means that, okay. So, x equals none. Okay. So, so katawa sine is opposite over hypotenuse. I'm so dumb. Okay. So that was opposite over hypotenuse. That Is means x. Okay. Sorry. Don't. Okay, no need to be it. hasty. X equals to L sine theta. Like uh, a few uh, minutes left. So x equals to L sine theta. So now that means that uh, we found the perpendicular distance. From now why do why did we need that? Uh, no, we don't. We have still have a lot of space to go. Now, why did we need that? You may ask. Well, that's because uh, we're going to need that because torque. The torque of gravity is going to be the force exerted by gravity times the perpendicular distance the gravity goes. That's going to be mz times what we just found. So now we have this. Hanging out on the other side. Okay, so now uh, what would we do here, you may ask? Well, I, so, first of all, <sighs> there's a lot I want to do here, honestly. So, first of all, what I would uh, say, I would do, what would be on my top list, be doing this, eliminating I from that other side, so we can make this a little easier. Now, I, I believe, was, M L squared uh, L squared. Uh, no, it was M R uh, R perpendicular squared. But since this is not R perpendicular Z, but this is rather R perpendicular in reference to you know uh, the mass center of mass to the top of the blue line L. I'd say that this is just L. 
Now, if you use that logic, you can uh, you can thereby do that. So do that, and uh, with this, and with this. Now I only crossed out the exponent there, not the actual L. Okay. So that gives us the differential equation d squared theta over dt squared equals negative d sine theta over l. Now, this is grand. If you look at the differential equation for, uh, for the, uh, regular springs that follow har simple harmonic motion, you'll see that it's the exact same except for one little tiny difference that makes all the difference. There's a sign data here, which means thus that this is not true. All of this, that means that all of this was a useless cause. Oh God, I thought it was about uh, to slip for a second. That means that this does not follow simple harmonic motion. Thank you everybody for watching and I'll see you next time. Subscribe to Bally Science Lab and hit the bell that shows up for even more notifications when we make a video. Thank you for watching. Bye.